My name is Dean Pitcanis. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Canna Life Sciences. Well, I have a little bit of background. My background in, 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 on Wall Street as an investment banker covered some biotechnology work that I did. And it gave me uh, uh, at least the foundation and the guts to take the risk in the space. But I also noted that the cannabinoid therapeutics market was ready to really emerge from the pharmaceutical side. And part of that conviction came from looking at GW and saying, well, they're already there and they're proving themselves out and the marketplace is rewarding them. And they got rewarded by Bayer, by Novartis, by Otsuka Pharmaceuticals, by Wall Street. And I think if you're a pharmaceutical company, you need that staying power. Now, the difference was when my business partner came to me and wanted to be on the agricultural side, my economics background kicked in. And that was, it be, I became highly defensive to that in the sense that I predicted what happened in the state of Washington a year and a half to two years before it happened, which is price disintegration. You had inelasticity in the market of price because you had a closed market, highly regulated, no interstate commerce, and the inability to get outside of the, the, the borders of a particular state from a legal perspective, setting aside the black market, which is also a dynamic. I mean, you can go into New York right now. There are plenty of people that will not go and get a red card in New York because the price of the black market products are cheaper than what's being sold by the producers. And that's a fact. So when you have that kind of inelasticity and you could see it before the markets start to develop on the medicinal side, it gives you the strength of conviction to say, okay, I'm gonna be on the other side of the Snake River Canyon. I don't wanna be Evil Knievel in a rocket launcher that goes straight up and straight down. Now, that's not to say that the agricultural participants aren't going to make an effort to get to the other side, which is the pharmaceutical side, but they have to build a better rocket sled. And I don't think they're quite there yet. So it would have been, I think, a very long haul for us to try to be a pharmaceutical company from the agricultural side. So the decision to be there from the beginning was, was calculated. My personal connection to it, uh, years back I wrote a paper for publication and I still would consider publishing or having it published in Supreme Court stories. And uh, you had to write at least a volume of 40 to 45 pages uh, as, a, as a journal to the critique of Supreme Court's decision-making process as a body. And I wrote on a piece called Gonzalez versus Oregon, which was a, a case that started as Ashcroft versus Oregon in the Death with Dignity Act, and the use of palliative drugs to treat diseases or to end life. And I found that there was a disconnect between states' rights in neocon Supreme Court and states' rights and death with dignity uh, with regards to palliative care drugs being used to end a life, which the Supreme Court voted in favor of, versus palliative drugs like cannabis to preserve a life, which they voted against. States' rights in California were not the states' rights in Oregon. So I had a personal connection to that. I wrote the paper in, in late 2006. And uh, when Tom came to me with what he wanted to do, I said, read the paper first. And I had to take about nine months of his constant, uh, uh, you know, insistence that I involve myself into what he wanted to do versus at a point where I said, I'm leaving unless we turn this into a pharmaceutical opportunity. And when I did the research and I started to dig in and put the rules and the filter in place of where we wanted, where I thought the company should be positioned initially and, and through a process, I stumbled on the disease of hepatic encephalopathy. And it seemed to coalesce nicely with the government's patent, which was then a rule, how do we get an IP? We license it or we have to develop it ourselves. And I called him with what I had unearthed. And uh, he told me at that point for the first time that his father had the disease. So I felt a personal conviction and a, and a strong desire to continue to move forward and do it at all costs. Uh, and uh, it's been very costly, personally, in the sense that you don't see the monetary rewards. You know, you just keep pushing towards the goal and doing whatever you can to push towards that goal. So certainly you don't, uh, you don't disrespect what, what the call was in that sense. 